My God, I hope not. I'd hate to think they're stomping on cigarettes on the streets of gold. I'd hate to think we've got to have cleanup crews on the streets of gold to pick up aluminum cans. Most of them belong to cores. Hope to God there won't be no police department. I know there's not going to be no Battle of Armageddon. <laughs> Hello? You're not getting in that city, honey, unless you get it right down here. <laughs> Ain't nothing working in that city that worketh an abomination or a lie. <laughs> so we better get it straight right here. Hallelujah, or you're not getting in up there. Or I'm not either. Just, you know, sometimes the preachers say, well, I understand when I point, i got three of them pointing at me. Hallelujah. Praise God. And there is something that has always stuck with me. Paul writes a, one verse he writes to the preachers. And he preaches real hard to the preachers in that one verse. He said about him preaching this gospel that he obeyed what he preached, lest he himself became a castaway. I don't want nothing to do with that portion of that verse. Praise God. I can't think of anything more horrible than to preach this glorious gospel and be lost. Praise God. Amen. Like one preacher said, my God, go to hell from a church pew, but for God's sake, don't go to hell from a pulpit. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, I'm going to work on us tonight. How many of you want to get worked on? Are you sure? You positive? You promise if I work on you, you won't go home mad at me? Huh? Come on now. Because I'm going to work on you good tonight. The Lord's going to work on you. Praise God. Hallelujah. I hope it's not me. I hope it's him because it's going to be his book I'm reading. Hallelujah. Let's turn tonight to Luke, the 19th chapter. And I'm going to read Luke 19, verse 11 through 27. I haven't preached this for a long time. And I'm probably the one reason why I haven't preached it for a long time as the last time I preached it around here, it got me in so much trouble it wasn't funny. Well, I'm going to preach it again tonight whether it gets me in trouble or not. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Luke 19 and verse 11. And as they heard these things, he added and spake a parable because he was nigh to Jerusalem, and because they thought that the kingdom of God should immediately appear. I want you to understand that verse real close. I'm going to go over each one of these verses carefully tonight, and I promise to have you out of here by 12 o'clock. Praise God. Hallelujah. He said, therefore, a certain nobleman, everybody say nobleman, went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom, and to return. And he called his ten servants and delivered them ten pounds and said unto them, Occupy for a month or two, maybe six months or a year. Huh? Some folks think when they get in here they're only supposed to occupy a week or two or three or six months or a year or two, you know. But he said, Occupy. Till I come. You're a lucky generation. You're not going to have to wait as long as the ones before you. Hallelujah. Praise God. I didn't get any amens. I don't care. I can preach this without one amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. And But his citizens hated him. And sent a message after him saying, We will not have this man to reign over us. 
And it came to pass that when he was returned, having received the kingdom, then he commanded these servants to be called unto him to whom he had given the money, that he might know how much every man had gained by trading. Ooh, I just got some revelation out of that verse. Then came the first, saying, Lord, thy pound hath gained ten pounds. And he said unto him, Well, thou good servant, because thou hast been faithful in a very little. My Lord, I can't preach on all this tonight. Take us a long time. Have thou authority over ten cities? In case you don't know it, the Bible said, For every one of us that go in the rapture and are overcomers, that we would become priests and kings. So this verse means what it says. We're going to help rule the world one of these days. Praise God. President Bush and Gorbachev is going to lose their clout, and we're going to get it. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, and the second came, saying, Lord, thy pound hath gained five pounds. And he said likewise to him, Be thou over five cities. And another came, saying, Lord, behold, is here is thy pound, which I have kept laid up in a napkin. For I feared thee, because thou art an austere man. Thou takest up thou that layest not down, and reapest thou that did not sow. Ooh, that's quite an indictment against the Lord. And he said unto him, Out of thine own mouth will I judge you, you faithful servant. Thou knewest that I was an austere man, taking up that I laid not down, and reaping that I did not sow. Wherefore then gavest not thou my money into the bank, that at my coming I might have required mine own with usury? If you'd have stuck it in the bank, it'd have done better than you done. And he said unto them that stood by, Take from him the pound, and give it to him that hath ten pounds. Ooh, there was quite a clearing on, clattering going on. And they said, now I'm not sure who all they are, but they said unto him, Lord, he hath ten pounds. He's got the most. What do you want to give him more for? For I say unto you that unto every one which hath shall be given. And from him that hath not. Boy, this sure ain't like the liberals in this country. If they don't have, we're supposed to give what we got. There's a lot of difference in the Bible about the haves and the have-nots. For I say unto you that every one of you which hath shall be given, and from him that hath not, even that he hath, shall be taken away from him. But those mine enemies, which would not that I should reign over them, bring hither and slay them before me. Praise God. Let's pray and ask the Lord to minister to us tonight. Praise God. You may be seated. Brother Tracy. Praise God. Hallelujah. I have told you in the past few weeks that I do not believe that this is most likely the battle of Armageddon. I do believe we're fixing to see the battle of Gog and Magog come up on the scene. Praise God. The battle of Gog and Magog has never been fulfilled in the Bible. And we have taken ancient uh, maps of the world and showed you that they're all there. Praise God. <clears throat> However, 
this is going to turn into the Battle of Armageddon. And we're thinking that it'll be probably another 15, 25 years like it was since World War II, but I'm sorry for your sakes that it's going to be real quick. These two battles aren't separated by... No ways in the Bible can you separate these two battles by more than seven years. You can't do it. Praise God. <clears throat> and so we're getting very close to the rapture of the church. I can't impress that on you enough tonight. We're getting very close to the rapture of the church. If I was ever faltering around in the church in my lifetime, I'd get in an altar and get hot and stay hot because I'm going to tell you the rapture of the church is not very far away. In fact, there's something spoke to me in the spirit the other night and I'm not going to give it to you because I'm going to wait and see if it was from God. Praise God. But I'm going to tell you what, something was spoke to me in the night vision the other night. I haven't even told my wife about it. I haven't told nobody about it. Praise God. But uh, I'm going to tell you that you don't have as long as you think you have. And if you're going to do something for God, you, you just better get going. Praise God. Now, Jesus left the parable of the pounds. And a parable is a short story that everybody can understand. In a parable, you don't have to do a lot of research to find out what Jesus was talking about. If you know the Bible, and if you know the scriptures, you could absolutely read this story and tell what it's talking about. Praise God. That's right. An allegory is altogether a different thing. An allegory is a story with so much depth to it, it has to be searched out. Both of them are true stories. They're not absolute Incidents that have happened, and yet they're related to positions and act, act, an act, uh, an actual happenings that you put together and come up with a final analysis. Praise God. And in the case that we're speaking of tonight. This is a parable. And I would like to say tonight that there are some folks who call things parables in the Bible that are not parables. In Luke the 18th chapter of the rich man in hell, that is no parable. Jesus told them where the rich man lived. You say, how did he tell them where the rich man lived? Because he said, Lazarus laid at his door every morning. Everybody in town knew Lazarus. You all know the bums of this city? Well, if you don't, you're fortunate. They find Sister Elder and me. Hallelujah. Uh, a lot of you don't know professional bums. You don't know professional bums. I bet as little bitty of a city of Satani as uh, Brother uh, Massey has trouble with bums. Praise God. A bum is like a skunk. If he ever gets a free meal, he'll leave a mark. And every bum coming by, there may be a safety pin in front of the, your house stuck in a telephone pole. You don't know what that means, but the bums do. They'll mark your place. Sometimes they'll put a colored piece of paper in a tree in front of your house. And the next thing you know, you'll be feeding every bum in the country, wondering why. They're just coming to you and nobody else. <laughs> I don't care whether you believe it or not, buddy. I had a professional teach me this. Praise God. Hallelujah. And so, uh, 
And I don't want to be hard without compassion and love because we do take care of people that have need. Amen. There's a difference in people who have needs and people who live like parasites. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. But the rich man in hell is not a parable, honey. That is a true fact that Jesus said. Whoo. He even went as far as to say the angels came and got Lazarus. He didn't say the devils came and got the rich man. He said the rich man died. You know, isn't it wonderful that you just die and nobody knows what happens to you? But somebody should have found out what happened to the rich man because he said in hell he lifted up his eyes. So I know who come and got him. The fellows that have been stalking him all through his life and he just paid attention to them. Amen. Praise God. Now, but tonight I'm on a parable about us. And the purpose of Jesus Christ. Did you know that Jesus Christ came with a total purpose? He didn't, he didn't, come, uh, he didn't come and hang on a tree and die so every Easter we could have a big deal to break our record. That ain't why he died. He didn't die so we could all run around with palms in our hands on Friday. Hello. He didn't die because he wanted the whole world to wake up. <laughs> I gotta be careful. Hallelujah. I wish some of you knew as much about this as I do. In case you don't know it, us Americans don't worship Easter as Christ's arisen Savior. We worship Easter because it's the first full moon of April, which is the worship of the God of fertility. That's why the Easter bunny and eggs are in it. Because the Easter bunny is the fertile God that can shell them out like popcorn. Praise God. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Here we go. Hallelujah. I don't know how I get myself in all these things. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm trying to do something. I'm doing something else. Hallelujah. God gave us the story of Jesus Christ because He wanted to reach a world. And His total purpose of putting Himself in us was not to warm a pew. I pay my tithes. I fast twice a year. And I pray every Sunday. We don't even have a good record as a guy in the Bible. He said he paid all of his tithes and gave his offerings and fast twice a week. Here I am. I told you I was going to get in trouble. Hallelujah. Praise God. And I ain't never met anybody that likes to fast. I don't care how spiritual they are. Praise God. And I'm just going to be honest and tell you I don't like to, but I think it's necessary to. Praise God. The fact is, me and the flesh has had a battle, and so far he's won. But as we get closer to the date, God's going to win. Because I know when I get in revival, i got to be casting out devils and all kind of things. And I can't stand for them devils look at me when I'm trying to cast them out and say, Ha ha, you ain't done nothing, have you? <laughs> Praise God. See, you saints are lucky. You don't never have to cast out a devil. You just get to sit back there and watch the movie. Mm 
Maybe I shouldn't have come tonight. Maybe I should have stayed home tonight. Praise God. Hallelujah. Okay, you want me to? You're going to get it. Here we go. And he said there was a certain noble man. I wonder how many of you think Jesus Christ was a noble man. Huh? And he was from a far country. The third heavens is quite a ways. I don't even know what it cost to get to the moon, but it sounds expensive to me. Do you know they say that every time they shoot that shuttle into outer space, it costs every one of us Americans $5. And it don't even go to the moon. So I would say that he was from a far country. Praise God. 30 years to go to Jupiter and back. Ain't that the next step? I'm not a stargazer, so I don't know, but Mars? Oh, well, then I guess Jupiter's next, about the third round on the ladder. 30 years to go to Jupiter and back. You got to carry a bunch of groceries for that. You know that? Besides that, you better stop at the gas station and get quite a load. Only thing I know for you, they say that when you get in outer space, you never get older. <laughs> Praise God. Well, there must be something to that because they sing. Somebody wrote a song in a land where you never grow old. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. I would say that he's from a far country. Praise God. But for him, it's a short trip. What gets me is, is all this money, and then, boy, you sit there and, and you watch your radio and you see all that smoke come up around that, that uh, missile... <clears throat> Pretty soon it budges a little bit and shivers and shakes and wobbles and it takes off and it's got a pretty good stream of fire coming out of the back of it. It'd shock a lot of you to know that I used to fire them babies. I even used to put the atom bomb on top of them and the hydrogen bomb. Praise God. Somebody said to me the other day, I about cracked up. A guy thought he really was on top of it. He said, well, we could get a missile to Russia in two hours. I said, I should hope so. I said, back in 1960 when I was working on the Atlas F, which was so, it's so outdated and obsolete. Most of them, well, you can find one sitting over here at the, the um, graveyard. That's how they're selling shells now to these colleges. But when I was putting them up, an Atlas F would leave Minneapolis, Kansas, and arrive in Moscow, Russia, in 11 minutes in 1961. That's, that's getting with it pretty good. I don't know what they'll do now. I mean, they have advanced that stuff so much since I was in it that I, I almost feel obsolete reading the paper. Praise God. Hallelujah. And you said, boy, that's getting with it, huh? Yeah. In one twenty-fifth of a second, in the twinkling of an eye, twinkling of an eye, not a wink. A lot of folks preach on a wink. The Bible don't say wink. It says in the twinkle, and they say that it only takes an eye, a human eye, one twenty-fifth of a second to twinkle. 
in the twinkling of an eye, man, we done passed up Mars, Jupiter, and whoever else is out there. Satar. <laughs> Woo. You talking about a ride, honey. There ain't no cosmos knot or astronaut or any other kind of knot that's had a ride like that. Not the biggest knothead in the world's had a ride like that. Hallelujah! Praise God! Hallelujah! Woo! He's from a far country, but it don't take him long to get there. And don't take him long to get back. Hallelujah. And it ain't going to take him long to get us there. The ones that's going. Somebody says, you act like we're not saved, bro. I ain't acting like nothing. I'm just preaching. Shoe fits, put it on. Feller said, that, that's a pretty good fit on you. I said, well, who's wearing this, me or you? I said, it don't feel so good to me. I didn't think it fit. I told him, put it back in the box. Hallelujah. You know, if the shoe don't fit, don't wear it. But if it fits, put it on. Hallelujah. Praise God. All right. He's from a far country and he called his ten servants. I can't quite understand why he used 10 here when he had 12. Praise God. What's 10 mean, Mother? That'll have something to do. That's what I was trying to think too. I know 12 is the number of judgment. Praise God. can't remember what 10 was. I better get back to my numbers and get them straightened out. No, not like you learn in school. Praise God. Hallelujah. But he called ten of them and gave them ten pounds. Now if he gave ten of them ten pounds, how many did each one get? One pound. He distributed it equally. Ain't nobody ever comes in this church and gets more than anybody else. It's not it's not what you get it's what you do with what you get you go that all of you going to get the same Holy Ghost I got you go down there and repent you're going to get the same forgiveness of sins I got you get in that baptistry tank get baptized in Jesus name you're going to get the same remission of sins I got you come out of there fired up with the Holy Ghost, you're going to have the same go ye that I got. But you can learn to sit on your go ye. What are you doing when you're sitting on your go ye? Oh, you're just bearing it. Are you from that church? Who, me? Well, yeah, I go down there. <laughs> I'm kind of ashamed of it, I do. <laughs> well, yeah, I go down there, but uh, I, uh, I'm not as crazy as the rest of them people in that church. Are you witnessing for him or are you? You know, I, it don't make no difference what Carl Elder knows here or sees about you, but I certainly start thinking about the one that knows everything about you. He hears what you're saying. He knows what you're thinking. And he sees where you're going. And he knows what you're doing. Sit down to eat in a restaurant. (laughs) 
I eat with Christians every Sunday. I watch them Christians every Sunday. They sit down with their pastor and every one of them. Like a bunch of hogs slopping themselves. I don't see none of them pray. Not one Mennonite in that place have I ever seen bow their head and pray. Not one of them from juiced up church over here on 10th Street have I ever seen bow their head and pray over the meal. They put on the show inside of the church house, but what do they got outside of the church house? They're like everybody else outside of the church house. I don't care if it's in Pickwick or where it's at. I don't care if it's an egg sandwich. Now, I'm not quite as bad as Brother Gary. I don't normally pray over my coffee. I might should have a few times. <laughs> Uh, they know in pick quick we pray when we eat. And they know it at Hickory Gables. And they know it at Furs. And at the airport. Going to be some folks here at the wedding tomorrow that recognized us. I said, let us pray, family. We bowed our head and prayed. And the woman almost stood at attention. And when we got through praying, she turned around and looked at me and she said, You're Reverend Elder, aren't you? I said, Yes, ma'am. I didn't know who she was. Sarah had worked for her. She knew my daughter real well. <coughs> Praise God. I know one thing Jesus said. He said, If you're ashamed of me, I'll be ashamed of you. Man, what'd you do if you run around with your wife and she was ashamed of you? I thought we was the bride of Christ. Huh? Are we really? I I don't normally get in trouble with my wife too often unless I go hunting. But I highly suspicion that if I was out in public with her, and I didn't act like she was my wife that when I got home, <coughs> there uh, would be some uh, things to talk about. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. And I know out in public if she don't want to act like she's my wife when we get home, there's going to be some things to talk about. And I don't know who, who is your husband, you know. Well, who's your husband? Are you ashamed of him? <laughs> we got to do it when we're in the restaurant. No, you don't got to do it. Just go ahead and feed your gut. I hope that before you get out of the restaurant, you puke all over the floor. Till God teaches you not to be ashamed of him. Hallelujah. Praise God. And I've seen places I've ate before that I have absolutely almost travailed before I ate. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now listen. He, but his citizens, his citizens hated him. Somebody better give me a watch. I might preach to midnight. Give me your watch, boy. I don't want you to go sleep on midnight. You look sleepy. I'll throw a songbook at you. Whew, it's already 9 o'clock. i got to quit fooling around get with it. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Said the citizens hated him. Do you know who killed Jesus Christ? Is the people lived in town with him. It was the citizens he was with. They said, we ain't going to have him be our Messiah. 
He, he didn't come like we thought he was supposed to. I just wonder how many of you have had problems with that. He didn't come like you thought he was supposed to. Lord, I prayed and I prayed and you never came. And then someday you wake up and say, you know, he answered that prayer. I just never did notice it. He came. You finally woke up and didn't even have the decency to say thank you. But he didn't come like you thought he was coming. So you missed it. He didn't come like they wanted him to come. They wanted him to come with king's robes on and a crown on his head and 14 billion people marching behind him down the street with swords and spears and they killed off all the Palestinians and they killed off and they set this one up over here to be somebody and this one up over there and he just come like a baby wrapped in swollen clothes lying in a manger. But they shouldn't have missed him because the angels were sitting there flapping their wings where everybody could see them. Somebody said angels don't have wings. I beg your pardon. Some of them have six. Hallelujah. Don't talk to me about angels unless you know what you're talking about. You probably can't even tell me the difference between a seraphim and a teraphim. Praise God. Hallelujah. I want to tell you something. They're sitting there flapping their little wings on December the 25th. Most likely September the 29th. Praise God. And they were saying, Glory to God in the highest. He's pointing at a little guy down there in a manger wrapped up in swaddling clothes. They were saying, Peace on earth. All you kings, everybody, you could never bring peace, but peace is on earth now. Peace is on earth. How many of you listen to the news media today? Do you know what we're celebrating today? The 50th anniversary birthday of what? Oh, come on. I said, did you listen to the news today? Of the beginning of the United Nations and the first leader and general of whatever he is elected to be of the United Nations I listened to him make this state there be pessimists among us and there be this and that among us who say that we cannot build a world without war but I'm here to tell you that we have started today in a world without war I read one time of 500 and some odd wars in one year. That wasn't even close to this year. That's been five, ten years ago. I read we had 500 and some odd wars in one year. Us Americans don't even know about war because, you see, we never see nobody get shot. I wish to God you people would get out of this country. I bet you even down in Mexico they see soldiers carrying guns. You get over in the Middle East. We come down off of that plane, there was Egyptian soldiers mixed and met us. I don't have nothing but my billfold and my camera. And they met and they met all of us with fixed bayonets. Man, I ain't gonna hurt nothing. I'm just taking pictures of the pyramid and the Sphinx. Some of them crummy dirty Egyptians. Got over in Israel, right at the Wailing Wall, anywhere I'm at. Big antennas on her back, whipping back and forth. Loaded Utsis, walking with you. Loaded riot rifles, walking with you. Loaded canisters. 
walking with you. And the radio on and cracking orders. You see them Israeli soldiers walking 1530 at a time together. And all of a sudden you'd be walking along to the Wailing Wall to go pray. And you don't even know what's happened. Something's cracked on that radio. And them 15 soldiers take off running as hard as they go. I believe an Israeli soldier could run as hard as he can run from here to 30th Street. God said in the last days, he's going to make them boys lions. So we got into a friendly country, Amman, Jordan. And when we got there, he stuck a machine gun right there in my throat. He said, what you got in a bottle? I said, water from the Jordan River. Swallow it, prove it. All the time I was over there, I wouldn't drink nothing because I didn't want to get dysentery. I didn't. See, I've been through the army. Huh? Uh, you, you folks don't know what flies do for you. You wouldn't let them crawl around on your sandwiches. Praise God. You're fine. I, I wasn't about to swallow that water. And I'm going to tell you so. Only God helped me because I've been trained to take that machine gun away from that little dude and use it on him. And I'm telling you, my training come to me in a hurry. And I shook to hold it down. I had 27, 28 other Americans with me. I took that thing away from him in the flip of an eye. I want to tell you, the Lord spoke to me and said, just swallow I put some of my mouth, swished it around. He smiled like, ha ha, I give you dysentery, didn't I? And let me go. We got on the plane, they were standing all around that big 747 with automatic machine guns, making sure that plane didn't get blowed up before us Americans got out of there. Now, you Americans don't know nothing about it. I just see you wake up in the morning, there's guys with automatic machine guns standing around. Telephones going? What happened? We've been invaded overnight? They live like that every night in the rest of the world, folks. Amen. Praise God. Oh, God, help us somehow or another. Get our heads screwed on straight and find out what hour we're living in. This ain't the eleventh hour, honey. It's striking midnight. Let's go on. Now he gave some of them some money. And they they made it. Some of them did. Some of them made ten with one pound. Some made five with one pound. Pretty good. And then in one of them, he buried it. Verse 20. And another came saying, Lord, behold, here is thy pound, which I have kept. I laid it up in a napkin. Now, a napkin to us is something we spread out on the table and something we smear across our face and wipe our lips. But did it occur to you that they wrapped the head of Lazarus with a napkin? They wrapped the head of Jesus with a napkin. which was dead ceased I buried it with the dead it just ceased but I knew where the grave was There's a lot of folks that's got in Pentecost and they're getting 
their little light life lined up, you know. I had some people in this church. They're not here no more. They stood against me and stood against me, and I never come out and fought them. They wanted me to, but I wouldn't do it. Because you're not fighting me. You're fighting the God of God. Hallelujah. And they perpetuated in this church that God doesn't expect us to get out and knock doors and get people saved. Nowhere in the Bible does it say knock doors. No, it didn't say knock doors. It said they went from house to house breaking the bread of life. Hallelujah. Praise God. Nobody, uh, nowhere in the Bible does it say I've got to tell folks about this experience I've got. I mean, if they want to know what i got, let them watch me. I imagine they'll never find it. Because I don't imagine that you are emanating the right thing for them to find it. Hello? Anybody here tonight? And so he said, I knew that you was a hard God, expecting me to go out and sow where you didn't sow. And expecting me to reap where you didn't reap. Let me tell you something. Ain't none of us ever won anybody to Christ that he didn't reap. You can get your head so turned on goofy. I don't believe there's a preacher ever saved anybody. I believe the preacher preaches and they get saved. But the preacher didn't save them. And you didn't save them. You can run around, swell up, fuck up. Blowfish. Hallelujah. It's wonderful to come in here and see somebody get saved because you brought the word to them and you rejoice and all that. But don't get the idea you saved them. All you was doing was doing what you're supposed to do. You just taking your talent and going out and investing it. Now, now hoo, hoo, here I am getting ahead of myself. What verse is it? Praise God. Get back up here and look at my notes. Can't preach without notes anymore. My clutch is slipping. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thought I heard some noise behind me. Praise God. Verse 15. I picked something out of verse 15 night. I hadn't seen no more. And it came to pass that when he was returned, having received the kingdom, then he commanded these servants to be called unto him to whom he had given the money, that he might know how much every man had gained by buying. By what? Trading. By what? Trading. Trading. I had an old boy with me in Jerusalem. He said, I'll be so glad when we get back to the United States. And I said, why is that? He said, they got a price tag on things in the United States. You don't have to do this. That's why I like to go to Israel. And that's why I like to go to Mexico. Because they don't have price tags on it. Haram, sir, I want $50. Eh, no, no $50. You know it ain't worth no $50. How much you give? 20 20 Yeah. 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 I like to see him do that. I give it to you for 40. I said, no, 
20. Oh, man, you push a hard bug. What you got? What you got? You know what I'm talking about, don't you? Huh? Some of you know what I'm talking about. I don't know how they do in Costa Rica. I ain't never been down there. I'd sure like to. Praise God. Man, over there in Israel, I'd argue with that dude one night. I got mad at him. I mean mad. When I get mad, I get mad. That's all I'm going to say. I get mad. I gave him a $50 bill, and I, I found out you don't never give a Jew $50 bill. Because they don't know what change is. Boy, did I learn that night. He said, I give you this. He put up silver glasses. Pure stilling. I said, oh, don't lie to me. You got them things out of Mexico probably. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, precious hand card. Here he comes. All I wanted was that big nativity scene that some of you see. That's all I wanted. And there was fifty-some dollars everywhere, and I had him talk down to thirty-five when I gave him that fifty-dollar bill. <laughs> oh, I give you this. I said, "Don't give me nothing, you thief! Give me back my money." <laughs> oh, he said, "You hurt of my feelings. You hurt of my." I said, "Get away from me! You hurt of my feelings too." I had two guys with me. Old brother Vitito was literally down in the floor laughing, kicking his feet up in the air. He was telling that little guy, I can't remember his name. You remember his name, babe, that young one? That little guy was looking at his eyes big. He just knew me and that guy's going to get in a fight, man. I didn't know whether he was or not myself. Praise God. And... Pretty soon he put suitcases out. He put some more nativity scenes out. He said, you took taking my whole store. I said, you took taking my $50. <laughs> Old Vinito quit laughing, sit up. He said, Elder. I said, what? He said, how are we going to carry this out of here? I said, I don't know, but we're going to. I mean, when we, we carried everything we could to the hotel, when we brought it in, my wife looked down and started crying. Oh, my God, you got any money left? And she said, <laughs> praise God. What are you doing? I was trading. Trading my $50 for his store. Uh, he lied, man, they lie. He said, you know, I belong to your church when I lived in Michigan. I said, you did, huh? <laughs> yeah, I said, I get the Holy Ghost. I said, no, nah, you didn't get no Holy Ghost. He said, yeah, I did. I said, no, you didn't. Why you think I not get the Holy Ghost? Because Holy Ghost people don't do like this. Hallelujah. You ain't lying to this boy. I wasn't born yesterday. Hallelujah. Trading. You know how you get folks in church? Trading. Trading. You don't sell them nothing. You trade with them. Oh, I don't believe God can save me. Oh, you don't, huh? Why is that? Because I've been so bad on these alcohol mess, I can't. Well, I want to tell you what the Lord done for me. I want to tell you how he got me out of that bottle. Amen. 
trading. So, well, I never was on alcohol. How am I going to get somebody to say, have you ever had the victory? Huh? Man, there's more depressed people, oppressed people, disgusted people. If you tried everything and failed, how about trying Jesus? Huh? What are you doing, brother? Just trading. We're just trading. We're just trading. We're shopping here to see who's got the best. Hello? I think it's time to go down in the market and do a little trade. Maybe that's why I like to act like that down there. I, I'm going to keep after Brother Alio and Brother Jesse till they take me to Mexico with them. I don't care if we wind up in Acapulco or where we wind up at. Praise God. Just as long as they bring two pieces back to my wife. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I like it. I like to get in there and fuss and carry on and see who's got the best. Just get in there with your Bible and tell me what you got. Let me show you what I got. We just trade this out and see who's got what. Praise God. They got down there and traded. We get out there. You know, a lot of folks don't really want us cramming Scripture down their throat. They've had everybody cramming Scripture down their throat, but they ain't never found a real Christian. What they're looking is for somebody that lives what they say they believe. You know, you can't say that you're, you're, uh, you're really on par for God and say, you know that old they look at you and they say, huh, just like any other nurse in here. Got the same old personality problems. I messed up. I can tell by looking. Go over in the factory and sit down and everybody starts picking on one guy in the factory and, and you chirp up and start chirping with him. Yeah, that's right. He should have ate a bucket of bolts for breakfast and killed him. And they all sit around and look and grin. <laughs> he just like us. He got no more we got. Boy, I don't know if I'm doing good or bad tonight. Hallelujah. Man, I don't even know what goes on over at the clusters. I'm afraid to find out. <clears throat> Praise God. Just live it in front of folks. They want to find a Christian. Folks are really looking for a Christian. Somebody that don't cuss. I don't know whether you know it or not, but dang and darn and all that stuff is just cussing. That's a nice way of saying. I heard a woman on the radio this morning. I'm going to call her up some Wednesday when I ain't got nothing to do on Wednesday. Tell her, why don't you quit acting nice when you're cussing on the radio? Why don't you just cuss like a drunk? Praise God. Hallelujah. So if you hear that one these days on the radio, don't tell folks you know who it was. Praise God.
I tell you, ain't nothing like trying to cuss nice. That's just ridiculous. If I'm going to cuss, I'm going to cuss. But I ain't going to cuss and run the aisles and shout and dance and talk in tongues. You ain't going to get nobody saved like that. All you're going to do is run people away from God. Right, Brother Elder. Hallelujah. Praise God. i got to move on. Time is going fast. Now, let's look in verse 16 to 19. Then came the first saying, Lord, thy pound had gained ten pounds. He goes on. What they're doing is they're giving account for what the Lord has done for them. Then verse 20. I preached a little bit about the napkin. But let's see what made him carry on like he did. Verse 21. For I feared thee. You know, the fear of God is the beginning of but do you know what that fear means? Reverence and respect. Somebody said, it's not really fear. Well, I beg your pardon, it really is fear. Because I'm not taking God's name in vain. Because I respect Him. And I reverend Him. And somebody said, well, you don't have to... Uh, uh, Respect him and, and all that stuff because you're afraid of him. Oh, yeah? That's what's wrong with a lot of folks today. They don't think God will mess them up. You take God's name in vain and you go damning him. When he gets through damning you, you wish to God you hadn't did so much damning. You go over there and look at yourself in the mirror and cancer's eating you till you look like a skeleton looking in the mirror. Hello. You go over there, young, beautiful woman. You look in the mirror. You look like a toothless old hag. And your husband's gone. You're lonely. Hello. I'm going to keep right on loving him. I'm going to stay right in the altar and say, He's God and His name's Jesus. Hallelujah and I love you God and I praise you. Glory to God. Glory to God. I'm not taking His name in vain. They can cuss all around me. They can call Him everything they want to. But every time they say something bad about Him, I'm going to say, Praise God. I wish I could look like Brother Gary. I don't know how he does it. Praise God. <laughs> Lord have mercy and he looks at you with them eyes and makes you want to praise the Lord because you're afraid he's going to hit you or something. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah, amen. Praise God. <laughs> praise God. Hallelujah. Woo. They run him down, I'm going to lift him up. Amen. They damn him and I'm going to praise him. Right. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. amen. Glory to God. I love him and they hate him. I've got the book right here in front of me. When I get through tonight, I'm going to prove to you they hate him. Do you know why they're going to the valley they're going to? They laughed at him for years. The big downtown churches said, Well, this is, a, this is an allegory and this is a theophany. What's an allegory and what's a theophany? The book of Daniel and the book of Revelation. Uh, we don't, I listened to some jerks on TV. Uh, yeah, TV. <laughs> Hallelujah. On the radio last night. Ain't no television in my house. You can come look and see, praise God. Hallelujah. And that's where I was in my house by my grandbaby last night. Hallelujah. Fact is, Papal had to turn the radio off because I was keeping him awake till one, two o'clock in the morning. Praise God. But, uh, I, I was listening to that last night, 
And, and I got to thinking. Oh, I was listening to this one guy. And, and he said, well, you know how it is. Some folks think we got to go to this war. They just don't think there's any way we can get out of going to this war. Because they say it's in the Bible. And because it's in the Bible, we got to do it. And I started laughing my head off. I said, you fool, you fool, you fool, you fool. You laugh at that book all you want to, you fool. But in the end, everybody's going to say, you fool, you fool, you fool, you fool. Amen. I don't know about you, but I'm glad I can read the book. And I'm going to tell you something. You don't need a high school education to understand the book. And you don't need a college education to understand the book. And if you've got one and you can understand the book, praise God. And if you don't have one and you understand the book, praise God. Hallelujah. But you better pray you understand the book. Because the book's right, and all the talk shows are wrong. The book's right, and I'll guarantee you, you can run President Bush down all you want to tonight. He's worth millions. And he is an oil man. But he ain't trying to save the oil like all the liberals are saying. He's got a whole world in trouble. Including himself. And I'll guarantee you President Bush would easily give one of his millions tonight to get out of this. But let me tell you something. He ain't getting out because he wanted to be the king in the chair. At the time the book said. At the time the book said. He got caught in the chair at the wrong time. You can swallow all that liberal garbage out there you want to. Hallelujah. This ain't about oil. And everybody thinks this is about oil. Have never even come close to doing their homework. Praise God. And what shocks me is, is born again apostolics is running around with that argument. Which goes to show me they sure enough are not spiritual. Because if they were spiritual, they'd know what's in this book. And I'm telling you, this book said we was coming. And you can't get out of it. Hallelujah. But I'm going to tell you one way you can get out of it. You can repent of your sins. You can get baptized in Jesus' name. You can get the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And you can get in the rapture. And you can get out of this. Hallelujah. Somebody said, well, you think you're going to escape. Yep, I'm going to escape. I ain't preaching on that tonight. But I think I will one of these nights. I just think I will, just to prove to you. Just, just let me give you a couple. You would like for me to give you just a couple little examples? Huh? Well, how's come God got Lot out of there before he destroyed it? How's come God got Noah out of there before he destroyed the place? You can believe in all of that junk. We got to go through the tribulation if you want to, honey. But I can mess that up so good it ain't funny. I'm going to tell you why we're not going through the tribulation. First of all, because the book said so. In 2 Thessalonians 2 and 1, I'll use the mid-tribulationist's own scripture on him. Praise God. And the Bible said that we, he said, and that, which is what? I might have to turn over there now because I wasn't preaching on that night. Until that which is. No, 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 no. That's First Corinthians 13 chapter you're talking about. There you go. 
until that which withholdeth is removed. You know what that is that withholdeth? Huh? The Holy Ghost. Now, how can the Holy Ghost, which is Christ in us, which is greater than all that's in the world, still be on the earth, and the Antichrist be here and be all power? It's impossible. Two powers can't rule at the same time. And the Antichrist is going to rule the world. I want to tell you something. The Antichrist is not going to rule the Holy Ghost. So that which holdeth is us. The only reason why some things have not happened is because the church is still here. But when the church is gone, God have mercy. You better believe I'm on it, boy. I didn't start yesterday. Praise God. Hallelujah. Don't come and fuss to me about these things unless you know how to fuss. Praise God. Hallelujah. Oh, ain't going to be here when Antichrist comes. I'll tell you something. I'm not looking for Antichrist. I'm looking for Jesus Christ. Whew. Glory to God. I'm going to slip through a hole in the sky. That's the reason why you better get baptized in Jesus' name. Now, I'm going to preach mean for a few minutes here. Mean. Just as mean as the Bible is. Luke, the 18th chapter. Is that where I was? 19th chapter. And the 27th verse is the last one. But those mine enemy. I want to show you some difference in the parallel here. In verse 14, he says, But his citizens hated him. But in verse 27, but those mine enemies. Because verse 14 talks about while he was on the present earth. But verse 27 talks about when he comes back. Those mine enemies, that's everybody that ever lived on the face of the earth that thought Acts 2.38 was a joke. That thought receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues was a joke. That thought if you had to repent to be saved, you was crazy. There, he, let me tell you something. You cannot violate these things and not be an enemy to God. You say, well, I don't have to listen to what you preach. That's what you think. I'm telling you what the Bible said, not what I think. And you're not my enemy, you're his. He knows whose side you're on. He said bitter and sweet water can't run out of the same fountain. I'm going to tell you something. You're going to have to do more and accept him as your personal savior. I'm going to suggest to you that you get him to accept you as your personal servant to him. It's one thing for you to accept him, but it's another thing for him to accept you. And I want to tell you, he don't have to accept you smoking and cussing and drinking and acting like a devil and carrying on like who don't know what. He don't have to accept you like that. You're going to have to become a new creature before he ever accepts you. And the only way you can be a new creature is to be baptized in Jesus' name because the Bible said when you come out of that water, you're a new creature in Christ Jesus. Outside of that, you're his enemy. You're running around saying, you don't have to do what he says. You know, it's one thing for you to run around and say, I don't have to do what my mommy says I have to do. You might get by with that. But you ain't going to get by with running around saying, I don't have to do what God says. I don't have to do what 
to do what my dad says. You might not have to get, do what your dad says, but I'm going to tell you, God ain't your dad. God's God. You better start paying attention because you, me, and everybody else going to do what he said do. Are we not getting in? Because we're his enemy. And you know, somebody said, well, my God, we've got more ways of saving devils than Carter's got little liver pills. Yeah, it tastes good. Well, if I don't go in the rapture, I'll get my head chopped off. No wonder my mom's laughing. If you ain't got enough guts to live for God now to get in the rapture, what makes you think you got the guts to get your head chopped off? I tend to wonder to get in the rapture than that. I'd have a rough night sleeping thinking about cutting my head off in the morning. I'm not as good at it as Peter is. I believe I can get there. I'm just not there yet. <laughs> Hello. I don't mind telling you. I tend, somebody said, well, you want to go in the rapture because you're chicken. Well, call it whatever you want to. I still want in the rapture. Some folks think you're a chicken because you're smart. Hello. Praise God. <laughs> I promise I'll get done here in a minute if none of the rest of you get up and walk out. Praise God. He said, if you don't do this, you're my enemy. You know, it's, we need to find out what is an enemy to God. Do you know you can be his enemy instead of his servant? You can run around the house of God running down what the preacher's teaching in the church and become God's enemy. Well, I don't think that God expects this and I don't think. And then there's always somebody in the church dumb enough to listen to you. Because it appeases their flesh. And we ten times rather pity pat us on the flesh backside than we would make ourselves get up and do what God said do. Didn't get any amens, but I know why I didn't get some amens. Some folks went to sleep, so. Praise God. Really ain't that late either. Praise God. All right. I want to hit this and close one. See, 24, verse 24 and 25. And he said unto them that stood by, Take from him the pound and give it to him that had ten pounds. And they said, oh! Wait a minute. He's the one that's got the most. Well, woke some of you up. <laughs> you know who you always give things to? The dumbest one. The one that can't do nothing with anything. It is. That's not who God gives them to. If this guy's smart enough to make one into ten, I'm going to keep adding to him because he'll keep adding. Praise God. Sometimes we need to wake up and see what the Lord does. Well, he's already got... You, 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 when you're pastor in church, you can't pay attention to a lot of folks. Well, he's got more than all the rest of us. 
Praise God. I mean, you know, when you give him something, he gets something done. Well, what about me? I mean, you know, I don't never get nothing done, but I'd like to have something. God's not stupid. This kingdom of His is very, very important to Him, whether it is to you or not. And He's going to give it to the one that's the most concerned. He's going to give it to the one that has the greatest desire. He's going to give it to the one that's more concerned about his kingdom and wants to get something done about his kingdom. Then somebody says, Ooh, look what I got. See here, I got the gift of tongues interpretation. Watch this. Yeah, 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 yeah. You see them? They ain't never working for God. They just want to stand up and say things. Do things in front of people. Get up and sing a song. Preach. Woo. Brother Westberg put out two preachers and both of them went sour. And boy, he's got a whole bunch of boys that want to preach in his church. And he got up and told him, he said, you know what? You don't want to preach at all. You know what you want? You want my pulpit. You like to have the money I got. You like to drive a Cadillac I got. You ain't got a burden for God at all. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Give us somebody to get out there. And go from house to house and break the bread. I believe in this revival. There's going to be a bunch of them. Come on, Sister Elder. I believe there's going to be bunches of them in this revival. They're sitting in their home somewhere. It's just like Sister Bonnie. I wish somebody lead me to God. Show me the way. Praise God. Hallelujah. Somebody's sitting out there crying night saying, Oh God, where can I find you? I remember a young lady that came into this church one time and was baptized in Jesus' name, filled the Holy Ghost, that told me she was walking down the streets crying. She's going to commit suicide. And she said to God, she said, If there's really a God and you really love me and you really care about me, help me find you. And she found God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. I remember a young lady just like that and two nights before we baptized her in Jesus' name, she took 33 aspirins and tried to kill herself. But she got baptized in Jesus' name, got the Holy Ghost, and she was a soul in a machine around here. She didn't backslide. She's another church still working for God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Woo! I'm going to tell you they're out there tonight. But you've got to have a servant that cares. Got to have a servant to know why he come. Hallelujah. We're going into the greatest battle in January and February. The devil's never cared about us for the last two months. But now he's upset about what we're thinking, what we're planning on doing. He don't want one sinner to get saved in this revival because that would be one that misses hell. That would be one he don't get to destroy in hell. He don't want one mind straightened up in this revival because that would be one mouth going around in this city flapping around all over town what God can do for their mind and how he can straighten out your life. He don't want drunk, one even, not even one drug addict delivered in this revival because he'll be going around telling other folks there's something better than drug rehabilitation. There's something better than Alcohol Anonymous. Ah, uh, oh, he don't want that to happen. Yeah. 
But I wonder how many of us are going to stand up tonight and raise your hands and commit yourself to God and say, we don't care what the devil wants. We don't care what the devil wants. We're going into his kingdom and we're going to invade his kingdom. We're going to take this thing in and we're going to trade. We're going to trade. Hallelujah. We're going to trade. Praise God. We'll teach the Bible study. We'll pray for the sick. We'll pray for the sinner. We'll pray for that on alcohol. We'll pray for that that's in dope. Hallelujah. A nation going to war. Mothers are crying because their sons are on the front line. They need the comfort of the Holy Ghost. They need the powers of Jesus Christ. Are you committing yourself to God? Or did you just feel something for a moment? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I said, Jesus, use me. Oh, Lord, don't refuse me. Because surely there's a word that I can do. And even though it's humble, Lord, help my will to crumble. Though the cost be great, I'll work for you. Oh, Jesus, use me. Oh, Lord, don't refuse me. Surely there's a work that I can do. Even Be great for you. I'll work for you, dear Jesus, though death may come my way, and I'll take the gospel to the fallen and if it be my lot Lord to go across the sea help me to be willing to say yes Jesus, use me, Lord, please don't refuse me, surely there's a work that I can do. Praise God. 